a very good morning to all of you i cordially welcome you all for this uh, applied thermodynamics course so the today's classroom discussion topic is how to draw the heat balance sheet in a thermal power plant so in the previous class we discussed about uh, how to calculate the performance of a boiler or how to estimate the performance of a thermal power plant and also we discussed about uh, how can we conduct the boiler trial so based on that we already solved several problems now the the last one in the boilers is how to draw the heat balance sheet or how to evaluate the heat balance in a thermal power plant so the motivation for the today's class is it is very essential to know to draw the heat balance sheet of a boiler to assess the performance of a boiler and the outcome i am expecting from all of you after completion of this lecture is you should be in a position to draw the heat balance sheet of a boiler now first of all what do you mean by the heat balance or the energy balance so that is in a boiler the heat is produced by the burning of the fuel in the presence of the atmospheric air because everybody knows that is the combustion of the fuel is taking place so in what way this particular the heat energy which is liberated by burning the coal is basically utilized in the various forms in the boiler that is nothing but the heat balance so here a part of this heat is used to generate the steam and the remaining portion will be lost so that's why the efficiency we are able to get it hardly is a 35 to 40 percentage only that is the 60 percentage are basically going waste that is the losses or inefficiency that is nothing but is a 60 percentage is lost so that is we are giving 100 percentage heat input in the form of burning the coal so out of which only some 40 to 35 to 40 percentage of the heat is only utilized to convert the water into steam that is to generate the steam but the remaining portion is basically lost so what are the various reasons for losing this particular the energy so that particular clarity is basically came to know whenever we are drawing the heat balance sheet so now it is this particular figure is giving you the overall idea about the heat balance or the energy balance so let us see here that is this is the 100 percentage that is the heat is supplied by burning the fuel in the presence of the air that is the combustion of the fuel is taking place so it is 100 percentage is your heat input so heat input to the boiler out of which some amount of the energy is basically utilized to convert the water into the steam in the boiler and next the heat will be carried away by the dry flue gases and heat will be lost in the moisture present in the fuel and heat lost to the unburnt fuel and incomplete combustion and the various other losses radiation losses convection losses due to the surroundings so that is one two three four five that is there are majorly these are listed as the five sources that is this input is basically utilized for five purposes so that is out of five purpose so this is our requirement so this is our requirement so this should be high then only the efficiency you are able to get very high so now all these are the various losses these are the various losses so we have to see that these losses should be minimized to improve the performance of the plant so that is the first one will be heat carried by the dry flue gases heat lost in the moisture present in the fuel and heat lost due to the unburned fuel and incomplete combustion and due to the radiation and convection losses so all these four factors we have to concentrate to minimize these particular the losses to improve the efficiency of the power plant so now our objective here is to how to calculate the energy input which is given to the boiler that is the heat how much amount of the heat is supplied to the boiler by burning the fuel so that is nothing but q inlet is in nothing but with the cv that is the calorific value of the fuel into the mass flow rate of the fuel so that is nothing but the lower calorific value of the fuel so the next one the heat absorbed by the water during its heating and evaporation how can you calculate so ma it is nothing but mass of steam generated per hour by mass of fuel fired per hour so this is given as ma into h minus hf1 
So here the MA verb will be calculated from using 19.42 equation that is there are the basic element in the fuel that is the coal is the carbon and similarly the flue gases we are having the nitrogen as well as the carbon dioxide. By considering all these particular the percentages we are able to calculate the actual air supplied per kg of the fuel burnt that is nothing but MA burn. So from this particular burn heat carried away by the dry flue gases because this is important one heat carried away by the dry flue gases the formula will be always in the sensible heat transfer that is the MCP delta T. So Mg CPG into delta T. T that is the delta T is nothing but Tg by this is the Ta and similarly the heat carried by the moisture which is presented in the fuel. So the moisture formed per kg of the fuel is nothing but is a 9H. So heat carried by the moisture is given by this particular formula of the 19.44 and heat lost due to the incomplete combustion that is the carbon is to be converted into the carbon dioxide but here the entire amount of the carbon is not converted into the carbon dioxide, it will be converted into some part of the carbon monoxide also that is called as incomplete combustion. So 1 kg of the carbon releases 33,800 kilojoules of the heat if it is burnt to carbon dioxide that is a complete combustion will take place otherwise due to the incomplete combustion it will release 10,120 kilojoules of the heat only. So that's why the heat lost due to the incomplete combustion. So that will be equal to 33,800 minus 10,120 that is equal to 23,680 kilojoules per is a kg of the coal. So now heat lost due to the incomplete combustion will be calculated that is by using the 19.45 equation. So the formula is CO into C by CO2 plus CO. So whatever the value so far we calculated that is to be multiplied to this particular equation. So heat lost due to the unburnt fuel. So unburnt fuel is nothing but so mass of unburnt fuel that is how much amount of the fuel is unburnt into the calorific value of the fuel. Unaccounted losses are important but that is how can you calculate the unaccounted losses that is here how much amount of the heat is supplied to the boiler minus the various types of the heat losses which are taking place so that will give you unaccounted loss that is the input should be equal to 100 percentage and the output also should be equal to 100 percentage that's why it is known as the heat balance it is known as a heat balance so output also should be equal to 100 percentage so that is we considered the four five different factors so Unaccounted heat losses is nothing but the input energy minus all these particular the five different types of the energies will give you unaccounted losses so that the heat balance we have to satisfy that is it should be equal to 100 percentage. So finally we have to draw the heat balance sheet so the how much amount of the heat is supplied that is equal to calorific value that is equal to the 100 percentage. So that is we discussed about the five different factors so how can we calculate A, B, C, D, E so far we discussed. So that is inlet percentage is also equal to 100 percentage and outlet percentage also should be equal to 100 percentage. Then only it is called as the heat balance sheet. So now please go through the some of the important questions which were asked in the previous gate examination. So that is he is asking us to calculate what is the equivalent evaporation of the water by giving the given data. So calculate this particular value and just I am giving you the answer. So after calculating you compare with the answer that is equal to 2000 kgs per hour. So already we solved several problems based on equivalent evaporation of the boiler that is m dot s into h minus hf by the 2257 kilojoules per kg. So by doing so we are able to get the 2000 kgs per hour so the answer is equal to a. So the next question is the boiler rating is usually defined in terms of what a b c d options are given you. Out of this which one is the appropriate answer to define the boiler rating. So the answer will be D because the boiler is basically measured with the help of the steam output in the kgs per hour. So that is the similar boilers are only will be compared that is which are having the same steam output in the kgs per hour. So like this uh, some of the questions were asked based on this particular important topic. So the heat balance is very very important one. So based on this particular the important heat balance the theoretical concept in the next class we are going to solve some problems based on this uh, heat balance sheet of the boiler. Thank you very much for listening this lecture on heat balance sheet. Thank you.